I think that there will always be small-scale scandals. There will always be plagiarists. There will always be people who didn't make the phone call that they claim to have made. But the chronic, repeated abuse that Jason Blair was engaged in, I don't think could happen at a newspaper that has a public editor or an ombudsman. Um, yes, there was a phone number published in the newspaper in the Times every day for people to call if they had something that they objected to. And when I got there, I thought I'd try out the system. Well, it said mailbox full. Nobody had been paying attention to it. If you have somebody whose job is specifically to respond to readers who are complaining or who are pointing out error or pointing out misbehavior on the part of reporters, it's very hard. I can't imagine that it would not be caught after the second or third time because, you know, somebody's reading that mail. Somebody's paying attention to it. My biggest concern about the digital technology as it's coming to the news world is anonymity of writers, um, whether that's the person who's you know, writing a blog or who's commenting uh, on, on, a sign, on a signed blog. Uh, we don't know who those people are. And um, one thing, I mean, this is not an ethical issue, this is a question of civility and taste. I mean, it allows cowards to hide uh, behind um, that that scrim while they have the, the freedom to say really awful and disgusting things. And I can't stand that. It's very upsetting to me. Uh, but beyond that, there have been a few instances where that person who's been commenting on this website or that website, in fact, is a principal in the story, uh, is in fact a, a, a figure who has a self-interest but is hiding that self-interest. Uh, I would really be delighted to see the... Uh, the websites of the world just suddenly declare, put on your real name or we don't care what you have to say. And in fact, I don't care what you or you shouldn't care what I have to say if I'm not willing to put my name behind it. You know, I, th I think that the, the, the peak years for, for quality journalism in this country in the 1970s and early 1980s, uh, if you go back before then, I mean, pick up a copy of the New York Times in 1965 someday. It was unbelievably dull. It was officialese. If the per there were a new Peruvian ambassador appointed, there it was in the paper. Uh, the shipping news, the, just the, the sort of the kind of the deadly uh, um, required drone uh, of news in those days was was really pretty awful. The paper got much, much better after that, as did all American journalism. And I think the Watergate obviously had a great deal to do with it. Watergate and also the magazine writers of the 60s, uh, people like uh, like Gay Talese and David Halberstam, who moved, both came out of the Times, but then moved to other arenas to be able to do more than simply chronicle. They could write, they did more. The, Coming together, that and the great victory for journalism that was Watergate uh, created a, I think in the 70s, it attracted better people to the industry. It was a more exciting thing to do. And, they, and people did their greatest work then. And the standards were very, very high. Uh, as we get into the 90s and we begin to have economic trouble beginning to show up, you know, uh, Time Magazine, where I worked for uh, quite a while, in 1990 had eight full-time critics on staff doing different things. Uh, today, I think there's one full-time critic, and that's uh, not that criticism is the most important thing in the world, but I use it as an indication of how things have shrunk back because of the economic problems. Mm -hmm.